I'll share the screen first. Is it visible? I hope the screen is visible. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, yes. already you have seen the unit number one, unit number two, and unit number four, which are prescribed in the paper Asian literature. Now it is unit three, where we have to study a novel, Interlock by Abdullah Hussein, along with the prescribed background topics. Now, first of all, let us understand the objectives and learning outcomes of this particular paper. This particular paper, it is chosen, it is selected by just two colleges, that is ours college, that is Rajkumar Keval Ramani Kanya Mahavidyalaya and Mahila Mahavidyalaya Nagpur, as far as optional papers are concerned. Why have we chosen this particular paper? The main objectives are to understand the concept of global literature, because in first semester, most of the papers we have seen from European literature, from uh, Indian writing in English. Most of the writers we have seen from that particular uh, section. This paper will give you an opportunity to understand, to learn, to study the writers, the novelists from uh, Malaysia, from Sri Lanka, from uh, China, from Pakistan, from Afghanistan. Because in the very first lecture, which was uh, delivered by uh, Dr. Urmila Dabir, we have seen the broken verses. It was written by Kamila Shamsi. And, uh, that novel was written by uh, Pakistani British novelist Kamila Shamsi. Then uh, the lecture which was delivered by uh, Dr. Vandana Bhagrika ma'am, uh, in that lecture we have studied Thousand Splendid Sun, which was written by Khalid Husaini. Who, was, uh, who is an Afghani uh, writer. And, uh, in the morning session, we have seen uh, uh, a wonderful novelist that is uh, Han Kang and, uh, and is uh, vegetarian. That novel uh, is prescribed you to study. So this paper covers the area of Asian literature. This paper gives you an opportunity to learn, to read the writings of the Sri Lankan writers, Pakistani writers, Afghanistan writers, Chinese writers. And now we are going to deal with a Malaysian writer, isn't it? So this is with the objective to understand the concept of global literature. What are the views and opinions and the way of writing of other people or the other writers basically from Asia? It, the, the another objective is that to trace the place and contribution of Asian literature to global horizon. When we will uh, see the background topics and the, right, the names of the writers, we will come to know that the names are very, uh, very different or they are very uh, difficult even to pronounce to Indian people, isn't it? So it gives you an opportunity to read, to study very different uh, kind of writers from different culture, from different language, from different soil, from different experiences. But basic thing, uh, we will be able to understand that the emotions are the same everywhere. Emotions are, say, are the same, bondings are same, relations are same, feelings are same. And the way to demonstrate humanity, the concept of humanity, the concept of goodliness, it is, a, it is same everywhere. That is very common, which can be seen in the literature from the globe. Third objective is there to critically analyze the Eastern entity against the Western view. Because Asian, uh, this Asian literature, it is different from the Western view. It is different from European view. And that will give you an opportunity. This paper will give you an opportunity to critically analyze the Eastern entity, Eastern speciality against the Western view. These are the learning outcomes of this particular paper, knowing about the themes and issues dealt by Asian writers, the problems faced by European people and the problems faced by Asian people. They are completely different from each other, isn't it? This particular paper will give you an opportunity to know about the themes and issues because the themes and issues uh, which are described or discussed in a particular novel or in a fiction or in story or in literature of any particular country, they are somewhere similar to the condition of the society of that particular country. And that's why it gives you an opportunity to know about the themes and issues dealt by Asian writers. 
it traces the contribution of literary writers to world literature how these different writers from different countries have contributed to world literature understanding different cultures traditions through their different works in the morning session we have seen the uh, culture or the way of uh, writing uh, of a chinese writer we have seen what is the condition in afghanistan when thousand splendid sons were uh, was explained by dr vandana bhagadikar the condition in which the women live what what were the what are the challenges even the current scenario if you are reading newspapers or you are listening the uh, news isn't it you will come to know what type of life is lived by the women in afghanistan in pakistan it is very tough for them in comparison with their life our lives the lives of women in india that is more liberal that is that is given more liberty uh, we have the liberty to think we have the liberty to act you know this is a great acceptance of women as a human being and equality equal status equal uh, uh, rights are given to women isn't it and that's why studying this different type of books different type of novel it gives an opportunity to learn to study different cultures different nations and different mentalities now as far as background topics of this particular paper it's concerned these are the writers which are prescribed to you to study in the background section the first one is rekel hang Rekel Hang is a Singaporean novelist and the author of the literary Despotian novel. What is Despotian novel? Despotian novel means uh, it it is related to an imagined state or a society where there is a great suffering or injustice. She is novelist who brings out a Despotian novel. Her novel it is uh, entitled. suicide club a very reputed kind of a novel a very popular kind of a novel it is suicide club a very young and dynamic kind of a writer she is she is just uh, 13 to 4, uh, 33 years old means quite young kind of uh, writer she is woman uh, novelist she is the one who has achieved great popularity in singapore and worldwide her short fiction has been published in many literary journals including the new yorker glimmer train tin house the most to of you and others the works like great reclamation and suicide club born and raised in singapore rekel hang is a very celebrated woman novelist in her country see you can see the image of this writer uh, in this particular slide rekel hang her suicide club as i have told you a very famous kind of a novel written by her which brings out the despotian kind of a state or the state of suffering great problems like that the mood that that this suffering mood or the problematic mood it has been brought out in this particular novel that is suicide club which uh, which clearly depicted through the title of the novel her suicide club was such a huge success that was translated into 10 languages worldwide and won many awards and recognitions world publication houses have honored her with great awards and recognitions she is one of the emerging writers of singapore that is rekel hang another writer which is introduced in uh, background section is sherlini teo isn't it sherlini teo uh, again a very young and uh, uh, enthusiastic writer from singapore you can see her picture over here Sherlyn Teo is a Singaporean writer based in UK. She is a winner of inaugural Deborah Roberts Writers Award for Ponti. Ponti is a very famous novel written by Sherlyn Teo. Now, what is Ponti? Ponti is a is about a friendless, a fatherless, sixteen year old Sue who lives in the shadow of Amisa, her mother. Uh, once a beautiful actress and now lives in a rusty house with her sister with her sister it is told from the perspective of three women it is about relationship it is about friendship and memory about things we do when we are young and then feel regret for the same it brings out the condition of a young girl that is ponti a very popular kind of a novel written by charlini teo it was first released in 2018 her writing has appeared in publications such as e square that is singapore uh, that that is publication from singapore magma party poetry the penny grateful quarterly literary review singapore 
These are all very famous publications from Singapore. In 2012, she was awarded the Booker Prize Foundation Scholarship to undertake an MA in prose fiction at University of East Anglia, where she is currently in her second year of a PhD in creative and critical writing. She seems to be a student. She is she's very young kind of a writer, just 30, 34 to 33 years old she is where she is currently in her second year of PhD in creative and critical writing. She is a recipient of 2013 David T. K. Wong Creative Writing Fellowship and 2014 uh, Sozo Cole Fiction Fellowship. These are recognitions are won by this young, talented writer. Now, another writer is prescribed to you, that is Tan Tuan Ng. Tan Tuan Ng is a Malaysian novelist, belongs to Malaysia. He is best known for his 212 book, The Garden of, the Garden of Evening Mist, which won the Man Asian Literary Prize and Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction and was shortlisted for Man Booker Prize, making Tan the first Malaysian to be recognized by all these awards. This particular, as I have told you, this particular paper gives you an opportunity to know about all these writers. These are writers, very young, very talented kind of writers, who achieved great popularity worldwide. This uh, Tan Tuan Ng also is 49 years old Malaysian writer, Malaysian novelist, very young and dynamic kind of a very talented kind of a writer he is. Now, Nunui. Nunui is a Burmese author who is related to Burma, Brahmadesh, known for portraying the lives of underprivileged Burmese in her works. We can call her a social activist also. Through her work, she brings out the problems of the underprivileged people or the people who suffer due to the injustice of the upper class, isn't it? She brings out such situations. She brings out such in, um, injustice. She brings out such conditions through her writing. Portraying the lives of underprivileged Burmese in her works. She has drawn scrutiny from government censors. So many works were censored by the government because uh, she was an activist. She is an activist, works for the uh, rights and the betterment or the upliftment of the downtrodden society. Her novel, Smile as They Bow, for which she was nominated for 2007 Man Asian Literary Prize, was censored for more than 12 years. Her works were censored by the government. It was, I mean, so she experienced a kind of ban on her literary work. In her writings, she projected the underprivileged class who suffered injustice in the country. Now, Nunui, quite a middle-aged, we can say, or a senior kind of a writer from Brahmadesh, born in Burma, in Brahmadesh, born in a village named Inwa in 1959 and has written 15 novels. 100 short stories are to her credit and several magazine articles also are written by her. Her short stories have included themes such as social injustice and have as a result been censored by the military government. Myanmar gained independence from British Empire in 1948 under the Burmese Independence Army and that particular government censored the works of no, no, we, but she, she, she was, she considered, she's considered to be very bold and very dynamic kind of a writer from Brahmadesh, from Burma. This is another young writer uh, from Asian literature, Thierry Singh. Thierry Singh is a Cambodian American human rights activist and lawyer, the former executive director of the Center for Social Development and president of the Center of Cambodian Civic Education. She is the author of Daughter of the Killing Fields, a book about her experiences as a child during the Khmer Rug regime. What is this Khmer Rug regime? It is actually uh, the name of a communist party, supported by communist party. Born as Chan Thierry Seng, she moved to the United States in 1979 with her younger brother after the Khmer Rug was defeated by the Vietnam Army. At the age of 17, Terry had lost both her parents and many relatives to regime, isn't it? She is also a very young, very talented, very dynamic kind of a writer uh, from Asian literature, isn't it? Now, coming to the details section of this particular unit, it is based on Interlock, the novel written by Abdullah Hussein. Now, who is Abdullah Hussein? Abdullah Hussein is a popular novel novelist from Malaysia, isn't it? He was born in Kedah, Malaysia. 
started he started his career as an assistant cashier in pehang he started his work for the newspaper shahadat he worked as an assistant writer for the newspaper he he has written many novels and short stories interlock is one of the most popular novels by abdullah husain and the most controversial novel from malaysia what are the reasons of the controversy of this particular novel what are the characters what are the main themes why interlock was banned in malaysia why so much controversy was faced by this particular writer by this particular novel we will see in the coming slides about interlock interlock is a novel it is a fiction written by abdullah husain it was published in 1971 actually it is a malaysian uh, novel and that's why it was written in malay basically it was written in malay and it was translated into so many other languages it was translated into english also it was included in the syllabus of malay literature subject as a compulsory reading for the students from fifth standard in schools throughout malaysia but later on this novel was banned why because it was said or it was uh, claim that this particular novel it brings out the racial discrimination among the people in malaysia so many references were there so many situations were there so many characters were there which have been presented as victims to social discrimination and some dialogues also are there which uh, which were highly protested by the people even the uh, copy or even the novel the, the text or the book uh, was burnt Uh, uh by the protesters even the images of abdullah hussein uh, was burned by the protesters so that was the rage that was the uh, protest expressed by the protestant uh, uh, because of this particular book it was later on it was removed from the syllabus previously it was included in the syllabus of malay literature subject as a compulsory reading for the students from fifth standard in in schools throughout malaysia later on it was removed interlock caused a controversy when de uh, detractors claim that the novel contained derogatory words to describe malaysian indians as pariya and black people malaysian indians because so many people migrated to malaysia so many people uh, started living in malaysia because at that time uh, this particular state it was under the rule of british empire as india was ruled by britishers similarly malaysia also was ruled by britishers and that's why what britishers used to do they used to take laborers from india and uh, to work in the factories there they used to take uh, labor from india and they were trained they used to train the laborers so that the laborers uh, would be able to work in the english factories and that's why it was migrated so many people were migrated to malaysia from india to malaysia in this particular novel it was claimed that abdullah hussein he has used derogatory words insulting words humiliating words to malaysian indians the indians who used to live in malaysia as pariya or black people indians were referred as black people and as pariya pariya means it is a member of indigenous people of southern india originally functioning or uh, ceremonial drummers but later on uh, they were considered to be the people belonging to low caste community or down trodden community that's why this particular uh, book it received a great controversy interlock caused a controversy when detractors claim that the novel uh, click contain derogatory words to describe in the uh, malaysian indians as pariya or black people the largest malaysian indian political party demanded the book to be removed from the school syllabus so a group was there uh, the group of indian people who were settled in malaysia that group was there and that group strongly opposed or strongly uh, marked their uh, views uh, against the publication of this book at the same time against uh, prescribing this book for the school children and that's why this book was banned in malaysia so this book received great controversy and abdullah also received great controversy as far as the text of this particular book is concerned three main characters are there 
these are the chief characters simon is there simon is a malay protagonist basically he is a native person or he lives in malaysia simon a malay protagonist three protagonists are there the protagonist means the central character who suffers isn't it three main characters are there three main characters belong to three different countries the first one is simon he is a malay protagonist basically born and brought up in malaysia he is a native person there simon malay protagonist the second character is there from china he is a chinese protagonist and the name of the character is chin hua isn't it the third and the most important character is meniam meniam is an indian protagonist so many things so many sufferings were experienced by meniam in this particular novel now that as far as the uh, significance of the title of this particular novel is concerned this novel revolves around these three characters interlocking their lives together all these characters they are connected somewhere they are interlocked somewhere and that's why the uh, whatever the sufferings are there whatever the problems are there whatever the complications are there they are common in the lives of all these three people some situations are common in the lives of all these three people causing problem causing complication and that's why the novel the title of the novel is interlock मैडम मैडम क्लास सुरू थोड़ा बहुत फोन करो एज फार एज द प्लॉट ऑफ दिस नॉवेल इज कंसर्न द स्टोरी इज सेट इन पेनांग पेनांग इज अ मलेशियन स्टेट इज इट इट द स्टोरी इज सेट इन पेनांग इट इज इट इज प्रेजेंटेड फ्रॉम द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ पेनांग इट इज सेट इन अर्ली नाइनटीन हंड्रेड नाइनटीन थाउजेंड during the colonization of british over malaya at that time uh, britishers were ruling over malaysia british malay describes a set of states that were brought under british hegemony hegemony means control supremacy hegemony or control between the late 18th to mid 20th century it was called as the unfederated malay which were under the sovereignty and direct rule of british crown after the period of control by the east india company the picture is there or the setting is there before independence of malaysia and that's why it was governed by it was ruled by britishers ha huh? this particular setting is there it brings out it brings out the lives of indian society in malaya in malaysia it depicts the situation when the indentured laborers what is indentured laborers indentured laborers means it is a labor uh, which is forced to work zabardasti jin ko leke gaya hai kaam karne ke liye that is indentured labor it brings out the lives or the picture or the sufferings or the experiences of the indian community indian society in malaysia it depicts the situation where the indentured laborers were brought in from india and turned into manpower in rubber plantation by british there the rubber factory was there rubber plantation was there and indian uh, indentured laborers were taken to malaysia from india uh, to work in rubber plantation means they were just used as a manpower as laborers they were used they they used to work there as laborers he discusses the culture of malay uh, malayan untouchable in his fiction the main thing is that in uh, which is presented in this particular novel that is uh, interlock untouchability is focused untouchability means uh, some uh, the, the society is divided it is a picture of a society which is divided into two sections the superior caste and the inferior caste you know and untouchability is followed some castes uh, are considered to be uh, lower and some uh, caste were considered to be superior and that's why the society was not a balanced society it was not uh, we can say that it is uh, injustice was uh, experienced by the lower strata of the lower community the lower strata of the community that is called as untouchability this untouchability was there or it was rampant in indian society also uh, before in uh, before indian independence hai na ye chua chut bhed bhav hai bharat mein bhi bahut zyada tha and the same picture was there in malaysia also here in this particular novel abdullah hussein brings out or he projects that indian untouchability was more bitter than malaysian untouchability and that was also was highly objectionable 
and uh, that was one of the reasons why the book was removed from the syllabus of the fifth standard. It discusses the culture of the Malay, Malayan untouchables in his fiction. In this fiction, in this novel, he brings out the condition of Malaysian society also, which is also uh, means uh, uh, which also faced the problem of untouchability like India. It is not possible to cover the entire novel, but some of the points are covered here. Uh, let us summarize the novel in this way. Hussein begins the story of the main character, Maniam. Maniam, as we have seen in the earlier slide, three main characters are there. Chinese character is there. Malaysian native personality is there. Simen is there. Then um, that uh, Chin's Huat is there. And the third character is Maniam is there. Maniam basically is Indian who is shifted or who is migrated to Malaysia. Hussein begins the story of the main character, Maniam by describing his journey from India to Malaya on board a ship. Maniam's journey is described as, his journey is described here. How, uh, how uh, did he reach there in Malaysia? It is stated in the novel, in July 1910, on a passenger ship leaving the port of Nagapatnam and route to Penang, stood a Tamil passenger from a village in the district of Pichur in Kerala on the west coast of South India. It is very clear that Maniam belongs to South India. He belongs to Kerala. And from there, his journey starts. He reaches to uh, Malaysia through uh, Trichur. Uh, he, he starts his journey from Kerala and he reaches to uh, Malaysia on the west coast of South India. It had been two days since he left the village, riding on all kinds of transport, reaching Madras and going further towards Nagapatnam. It was not so easy to reach to another country, to reach to other country. It was not so easy at that time traveling. The means of transport were not so developed. And that's why the journey was not so easy to Maniam. He had to take different kinds of transport to reach Malaysia. It was not, the journey was not so easy. It had been two days since he left the village, riding on all kinds of transport, reaching Madras and going further towards Nagapatnam, the port city from which he could travel to the golden land. What is this golden land? Golden land is considered to be uh, Malaysia. The novel portrays that the caste practice in Malay are not as rigid as they are practiced in India. As I have told you in the novel, it is presented that the casteism in India or untouch the problem of untouchability in India, it was more beat, it was more bitter than the problem faced by Malaysian people. And that was one of the reasons for the protest. The novel portrays that the caste practice in Malay are not so as rigid as they are practiced in India. The rigidity of the caste system is lax in Malaya, as in the example below. It has, it has been presented in this particular novel in this way, with these words. Maniam adjusted to life in Penang. Penang, it is a part of Malaysia. He felt good because for the first time in his life, he felt he was treated like a human being. It is presented that he feels relaxed when he reaches to Malaysia because it is, it is presented in this novel that the condition in his own country, uh, it was better than uh, his experiences in Malaysia. Bitter untouchability was there, casteism was there in a uh, uh, more rough manner in India. Maniam adjusted to life in Penang. He stood good because for the first time in his life, he felt he was treated like a human being. He was free to mingle with other Indians. Here he was free. In Malaysia, he was free to mingle, to uh, get together or to get adjusted with Indians in an easy way. It was not so easy in India. It is presented in this particular novel. He was not afraid he was breaking the taboo if he touched someone of a higher caste. It was not allowed in India to touch the person from a higher caste or higher community. But it was not like that in Malaysia. This particular difference was experienced by Maniam when he reaches to Malaysia. He was not afraid he was breaking a taboo if he touched someone of a higher caste. He would not be sworn at nor cast aside by members of his own community. In India, he was outcasted or he was treated as a person belonging to the inferior community, isn't it? From the down straight, the downtrodden strata of the society. He was not given dignity, he was not given honor. But in Malaysia, 
this particular situation was not there in malaysia he was experiencing a kind of liberty he was experiencing a kind of freedom in that way that untouchability was experienced by many in india in a bitter way but that bitterness was not there in malaysia when he reaches to penang if the meeting ends here because of time uh, i'll send you immediately the next uh, id of the meeting you should join that another important feature of the novel is that it brings out intercultural contact which can be seen among the malay malayas uh, sorry from the malaysian people chinese and indian immigrants immigrant means migrated people the people who uh, shift from one place to another who travel and get settled from one part of the country to the other country isn't it ek desh se dusri jagah dusre desh mein jaane wale jo log hote hain they are called as immigrants or migrants intercultural contact can be seen among malayas chinese and indian immigrants before settling down to malaysia simon chinwat and maniam struggled to overcome obstacles naturally it is not so easy to get settled in the, uh, the new country it is not so easy to get settled uh, at the new place we have seen this particular feature we have seen this particular uh, thing when we dealt with diaspora literature when we read the chief writers of diaspora literature we uh, we have studied that it is not so easy to get acclimatized with the new culture to get acclimatized with the new language with the new culture with the new soil with the new atmosphere with the new people and that's why the people who get migrated to the new land they feel uh, they feel like they don't feel homely isn't it they feel that they are uh, who, who are not from this particular uh, this particular soil they are not from this particular culture and this otherness is there it is felt by the migrants the same kind of feeling was experienced by uh, chinguat and maniam because this chinguat he was from china and maniam was there from india and that's why the feeling or the experience of the migrant was experienced by chinguat and maniam they they overcome all these obstacles getting settled to the new land chinwat and maniam had to leave their country due to their unfortunate living conditions Un, um, unfortunate living conditions means they did not have favorable conditions at in their country at their land and that's why to get settlement they have to uh, settle at the new place and that's why that was that's why it was not so easy for them because they were taken to the new land as laborers and that's why as far as maniam is concerned he went there he went to malaysia because he failed to find a job in his own country due to so many eligible people in the land due to great population he couldn't find out a suitable job and that's why he goes to malaysia to get the new job to get the settled life it is challenging to both to get settled at the new country both of them it, to both of them it was not so easy to get settled at the new land at malaysia and that's why their struggle to get adjust their struggle to get acclimatized with the new culture with the new land with the new language it is presented in this particular novel it creates a conflict and competition in terms of defending one's own culture or assimilating to the cultures of the natives it is not so easy to get acclimatized or assimilating to get adjusted with the native culture the native culture of malaysia and so it brings out their conflict it brings out the competition it brings out so many things which help or which uh, um, which which are faced by these characters to get settled in the new land it is depicted that chinese are associated with mining activities ab now um uh, every uh, the people from every country or the people from india they were engaged in some different profession chinese people they were engaged in different profession and they used to live or they used to prefer the company of their native people in the foreign land means if chinese was there he preferred to live in the company of Ch other chinese people if indians were there they used to live in the company of other indians there to feel the uh, to feel that homeliness or to feel the similarity of the culture and uh, to feel homely they used to live in the company of other people who belong to their native place it is depicted that chinese are associated with mining activities or business indians are engaged in estate coolies and locals are busy in the work as farmer 
cement belongs to this profession of farming. The novel brings out that immigrants prefer to teach their own language and culture to their next generation. The Indian people, they wanted to teach their younger generation only the Indian language. They wanted to teach them Indian culture. They wanted to bring them close to Indian culture because in their mind, it was very clear that a day will be there that our young generation has to go back to India. And that's why they preferred the Indian schools there, but it was not so easy to get admission in Indian schools because Indian schools were very limited or Indian schools were not there in some of the parts of Malaysia and Malaya schools were there. And in Malaya schools, only the native peoples were preferred. And that's why this was a problem faced by the Chinese people, the Indian people, how to educate their young generation. The novel brings out that the immigrants prefer to teach their own language and culture to their next generation. They do not want to take admission of their children in Malaya government schools. The desire to keep the self in touch with the homeland culture is seen. It is very uh, common in uh, the literature of immigrants or in the literature of diaspora where the people shift from their own country to another country. They try to get settled with the other country. It is very common to feel this kind of feeling or emotion. Abdullah might have used Malaya language as a tool to unite people of Malaysia with the essence of nationalism and sense of belonging. He give In the novel, we can see that he gives importance to Malaya language. It may be there that he wants, he uses this particular language as a tool to unite people of Malaysia with the essence of nationalism and sense of belonging. In the middle of the novel, they are presented a picture of migration groups forced uh, to a new social situation to which results to stabilization of the relation. Some forceful situations are there, forceful adjustments are there. Means the adjustments are imposed by the Britishers or by the Japanese on the Indians and Chinese that you have to get adjusted with this, this particular situation. So forced adjustment was there. And forced things, they never success. You know? Voluntary things, they get success because they are, are done. They, they, are, they are done with the great desire isn't it? This is force adjustment and that's why the Chinese or the Indians or the people from other countries, they fail to get adjusted with the Malay, uh, Malaysian culture. Here the novel shares an equal amount of hardship, torture, maltreatment, uh, which is imposed by Japanese business practices. So uh, the characters, the main characters of this novel, that is Jin Wat and Manium and Simon, they go through the hardship they experience a great amount of hardship. They experience torture and mal maltreatment at the, uh, at the hands of other people. Further, the novel brings out chaotic condition where the migrants and the native people suffer. The sufferings of the native people like Simon, the sufferings of Indian people, the migrated people.